Question five. Well, we've got some nice easy marks to pick up here. Look, let's go and differentiate this first of all. Just tells me to do this. It's kind of guiding us through this question. So, b times four, so that's 72 x squared plus 84x minus 32. Oh, let's just do it again. All right, that's going to be the easiest three marks we're ever going to get. Um, so, what we've got 60x squared, take away 72x and plus 84. All right, that, there you go. Nice, easy three marks. Right, now, part B. All you got to do here is let's just sub in, let's just sub x equals 1 into dy and the dx. And if you do that, what will happen is that it equals, it equals 0. So we can say, so as dy over dx is equal to to zero must be stationary, i.e. the gradient is equal to zero. Right, now let's have a look at this, this part two. Now, when I was looking at this one, um, I think a lot of people missed, missed the marks here. Um, and, and the reason is, is that they just, they just sub x equals one into, into this here. Um, which actually isn't quite enough, right? Got to do a little bit more than that. We need to think about what's a point of inflection, okay? So first of all, let's just consider what it is. Because if you know what it is, actually the process is relatively simple. A point of inflection means basically this, this sort of thing is happening with your graph, okay? Like your curve. So it's going to like going up that way or, or maybe the other way like that. And what's happening is that the gradient is, is kind of going along this path. The gradient is getting smaller, 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 smaller. Then the gradient becomes zero. And then the gradient starts getting bigger, 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 bigger. So here the gradient would always be positive. Here the gradient is always negative. But the change in the gradient here, it's going from, it's getting smaller to getting bigger. And here, the gradient is going to be getting bigger. Okay, so it's the other way around. Um, so what we need to actually do, there's two ways of doing this that we, we, we need to explore around x equals 1. And I would suggest looking at something like um, looking at like 0 0.9 in and 1.1. Okay, don't don't make it too far away. Maybe just look at those two points to begin with. So we could think about this, think about the gradient on both sides. Okay, or number two is we could think about the change in the gradient. Now, if you explore this idea, if you look at 0.9. 1.1, 1 .1. okay, what happens is that we get minus 0 0.14, minus 0 0.1. So that means it's a negative gradient before and a negative gradient after. So it's, it's backing up this idea just here. What about this? What happens here? So, so if I did this, you would just need to say same sign. Okay, same, uh, same direction of gradient. If I do this one on the other hand, if I work these two values out either side, right, so you've got to explore either side. And then we get, uh, we get 3 and we get minus 1.8. So what's happened here, talking about change, changing in the gradient. In other words, let's just, so we, we, we know this is happening from here. So what's happening is through this stage, the gradient is increasing, okay? Because it's going from like, it's going starting off being big negative and then less negative, okay? And then here, the gradient is becoming less. So here, we can say 
is a change of sign. Now, for myself, I usually concentrate on this one because it's it's like it's easier to think about what's going on. All right, so you only, you only need to explore one idea. I would do that one there. It's much easier. All right, think about what actually a point of inflection is.